Gunbrella is a 2D side-scrolling action platformer and sort of Metroidvania set in a pixel art filled nor punk world following a gruff woodsman on his quest for revenge. Also the gun is an umbrella. That feels important. The game immediately piqued my interest when it first revealed a Nintendo Indie Showcase in May 2022. Fast forwarding to today, the game is expected to release later this year for PC and Switch with other console releases in the future not fully ruled out. After playing the demo, it's only gotten me more excited for this game as it's quickly becoming one of my most anticipated indies of the year that deserves more attention. So let's get into the details of where this game came from, where you can find the demo for yourself, and why you should be excited for it. This is in development. Starting with the game's main mechanics and specifically the game's namesake, the Umbrella is a multifaceted tool that goes way beyond its twin stick shooting. It also helps keep you dry. But even more so, it is used for so much different movement tech like dashing quickly in any direction, drifting slowly to the ground, and using it as a zipline. It creates a lot of interesting ways to move through the world and you already know speedrunners are going to do some wild things in this game. The Gunbrella offers a lot of additional combat applications as well, such as being able to dash into enemies to stun them, even pogoing off the enemy, and it can be used to block and ricochet bullets. This along with the movement capabilities creates an amazingly free-flowing and fast-paced action platformer that is immediately fun. The demo first appeared during PAX West in 2022, and has since been available on Steam where it's still free to try out today. It takes you through a small town and sewer overrun by cultist kidnappers aptly named Colt 45. And it gives you all the tools mentioned above to explore, solve some puzzles, take on a few quests, and take on a boss fight against a giant meatball. There's so much to like about this game, but perhaps the most notable aspect that really works is just how much it feels like a big playground. You're given so much freedom of movement with your various abilities and dashing in any direction you want with not much of a cooldown gives you a lot of options to be creative in how you approach any given room. You can probably go through this game slow and casually, but why on earth would you do that? I mean that's just lame when we can dash around like a maniac and do something much cooler. There's a lot more to this game to unpack, but first let's go back in time a minute to how this game came to be. Gunbrella comes from Doinksoft, an Oregon-based tiny indie dev studio, and you may already know Doinksoft from their previous work such as the mini Metroidvania Gato Roboto, the indie game knockoff compilation Devolver Bootleg, and the NES-style and Nintendo Switch physical copy-only Demon Throttle. Doinksoft has officially joined Devolver Digital earlier this year, becoming an in-house development team for the well-known indie game publisher, a partnership that makes a lot of sense after years of working together on all of Doinksoft's games. But let's go back to 2019's Gato Roboto for a minute. It was a cult classic Metroidvania which took a less is more approach in both its visuals and its world size. Featuring a cat in a high powered robot suit, it was a bite sized adventure that can be easily beaten in a single sitting, creating a really tight experience that doesn't wear out its welcome by using all its mechanics to the fullest without any fluff. A short and mostly linear Metroidvania may sound like a problem but it's really left a lasting impression for many people who celebrate it for its fast-paced shooting, solid platforming, and minimalistic art style. It is well worth the price point and is often on a deep discount during Steam sales if you haven't tried it already. And Gato Roboto is important to talk about because you can see a lot of the same philosophies being applied to Gunbrella. In fact, the initial idea for Gunbrella came before they settled on Gato Roboto as their first game. Later revisiting the Gunbrella idea around the time of the COVID lockdowns which helped inspire the grim and dark vibe they created for this game. While it has been confirmed to be a longer experience than Gato Roboto, Doinksoft still very much subscribes to the belief that a great game shouldn't drag on, and Gunbrella appears to be way more expansive and is easily their most ambitious title yet. But let's get into the finer details on what makes up this game. A deeper story, more characters, and full-on side quests tracked in your journal would be a bigger part of Gunbrella, contributing to the game's longer runtime and bigger world compared to some of their previous titles. While Gunbrella will have a fairly linear structure to help drive the story in a tidy fashion, there is additional optional content through side quests and more world to explore. The game's grittier look, sound design, and blood splattering violence gives it a slightly different style compared to Gato Roboto's. This also presents a darker story about vengeance and a need to investigate the origins of the Gunbrella and the sudden disappearance of your son. There's something far more sinister happening behind the scenes as well as the Colt 45 are summoning some horrific monsters wherever large amounts of blood has been spilled. Gross! Despite this darkness, Doinksoft still injects their trademark humor to lighten the mood a bit and can be seen in conversations across its cast of strange and goofy characters. 
The game itself isn't quite a metroidvania, although the world will be fairly interconnected, with various paths to explore, your entire tool set, which essentially is the gunbrella itself, will be given to you from the start. Missing a key element of the ability progression you would normally expect from a typical metroidvania. This design choice, however, tracks with the dev's design philosophy that no game should be longer than it needs to be. You'll be visiting several towns and villages as you search for answers, interacting with NPCs to further the main plot, and taking part in some optional side quests that have some choice-based mechanics that will have impacts on the world or story. This has been hinted at since the game's reveal trailer as both these characters shown here are looking for the same gem, and the element of choice was later confirmed during interviews with the team. They expanded on this saying that it may lead to some different branching paths and events, but eventually lead to mostly the same overarching story being told in the end, with some variations in the finer details. This also offers some replayability for anyone who wants to see how these other paths play out. And quite frankly, based on the demo, the game just feels really good to play, so I could see a lot of people wanting to play this game again just for the fun of it. Although all of the abilities you need are given to you from the start, there's still ways to upgrade your firepower. Scavenging for scrap and spare parts throughout the world will allow you to trade for ammunition or other upgrades for your Gunbrella. So besides the standard starting shotgun ammo, we've also seen some rifle ammo and the chainsaw blades that can even bounce off your umbrella. And I'm sure there is more yet to be revealed. While there's still no firm release date, the devs have recently stated they are in the final months of development and we should be hearing of one very soon. The main mechanics are really well polished and it's hard not to trust Doingsoft who have a really strong track record. So you're gonna wanna keep an eye out for this one if it wasn't on your radar already. And that's a quick breakdown of what we know so far. Thanks for watching, I'm Colonel Dupes, and I'll catch you in the next one. Gumbrella.